This is a Game Boy Advance video cartridge. It's a Game Boy Advance cartridge that contains video. Yes, the name is pretty self-explanatory. If you were a kid during the early 2000s and you like cartoons, I can't blame you, those cartoons were great. It's lucky that you just didn't want to consume your sweet, sweet media only at home, on the TV, but also on the go. TV shows on the go! Wait for kids, catchy jingle, we'll get to you later. There were some existing devices varying in price that let you do just that, such as portable DVD players, portable mini DVD players, juice boxes, yes, that's the real name of a real product, video now, or even plugging a CRT TV to a power generator, which is not recommended for kids, but would work. And while most of them were pretty cheap, especially video now in juice boxes, considering they were for kids and kids are small humans with no jobs, so this stuff could be built from cheap plastic and break in three weeks and no one would really complain, the reality was that a lot of people didn't want to buy their kid another electronic device. Buying a kid only media device that can play only those specific media types isn't a great purchase, it's not like you can use a video now disc or a juice box cartridge at home on the big screen. So picture this, it's 2001 and to say that Nintendo was dominating during this era would be an understatement. Gamecube aside, our poor little guy wasn't selling well at all. Thanks to both their first party and third party support, they were managing to sell GBAs like hotcakes. The consoles accounted for 20% of all hardware sales in 2001 selling more than 5 million units. The GBA was released in Japan in March of 2001 and in Europe and North America in June of the same year, and this meant that Nintendo was effectively selling 500,000 consoles per month. Nintendo managed to lower the price of the consoles from 1999 to 7995, and they were planning to have over 200 games released on the system. The GBA was everywhere, it was a portable console that lets you play SNES level games or even some 3D games, all while running on two AA batteries. By 2003, Nintendo also released the SP, which was more portable and finally had a backlight. And this, again, meant more and more sales of the system. The GBA was so popular, even Rockstar was publishing games on it. Yes, there's a Max Payne version for the GBA. I fucking love the show thousands. Nintendo was reaching an enormous install base for their little console. But what if it could be more than just a video game console? If Nintendo could sell the GBA as not only a game console but also a media device, that would make it even more compelling. And that's where DC, not that one, this one, came into play. DC Studios was a software company founded in Glasgow in 1999. They were active until 2007 and they are known for games such as Raymond Diaz, Taxi 2 and the Hannah Montana tie-in game. But we are not here for the shovel war, today at least. We are here for the GBA video compression technology and that's what they developed. They approached Majesco, a publishing company mostly known for... The Genesis Free. Please don't ever buy this. DC showed Majesco their video technology and they decided to get that licensed from them. And after getting Nintendo on board, the GBA TV project, later rebranded as Game Boy Advance Video, was launched. Majesco initially managed to get four kids and Nintendo on board, with Mike Pollock, the narrator in the Pokemon English dub, being present here. Now Game Boy Advance plays more than games, it's got TV shows too! With GBA Video, the shows are right in the cartridges! One video pack holds multiple episodes! There were some concerns from various companies that this kind of technology could be used for piracy since the Game Boy Player was a thing and that let people use their Game Boy Advance cartridges with a GameCube and a TV, so you could hook up a VCR maybe and copy the, the thing to everyone you wanted, so a software lock was actually implemented that made the cartridges not compatible with the Game Boy Player. If you are interested in working around this though, I will link in the description a video from r games where they work around this specific issue if you really want to watch GBA video cartridges on a TV. That said, this software locking mechanism actually managed to convince a lot of companies to join the GBA video bandwagon, including Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Funimation, and even Disney Channel. 
But let's get to what probably most of you want to hear from me, which is how does this technology work? There are detailed patents explaining how the technology works and I will put a link to them in the video description, but I'll try to sum it up here. A Game Boy Advance cartridge stops out at around 2-2 megabytes of size and that's not a lot of space. Considering that using the YouTube A264 compression technique, which is modern and really wouldn't run that well on a GBA, so we are being extremely generous here. Just to make an example, a 45 minutes 640x480 standard definition video at 30 frames per second with a 8 megabit bitrate which is a size of around 480 megabytes and you can see here that a custom compression codec must be used unless you want to fit 45 minutes of video in 15 cartridges. The first step for DC was to reduce the resolution which does make sense since the Game Boy Advance screen can only display to 40 by 160 pixels so the video resolution was cut down to exactly that. The second step was of course to cut down on the frame rate. There isn't any official info on precisely the frame rate used, but after analyzing it myself by extracting the frames and counting them, I found it to be around 10 frames per second. The third step was cranking down the bitrate as far as possible. This is pretty noticeable on a big screen and by that I mean that we can't count the pixels, but on a small one and especially on the original non-backlit on the AGS-001 GBASP, the image looks pretty okay honestly. The compression works great with cartoons considering the simple colors and shapes and since cartoons do not usually depend on having a high frame rate, that works out pretty okay too. This really reminds me of the early Cinepack compression. You know what doesn't work well with that kind of technology though? Movies. And yes, they put movies in here. Shrek, Shrek 2 and Shark Tales cartridges exist and they look like this. The resolution was cut down to 112p, Jesus Christ, and the frame rate was cut down to around 8 frames per second. This is... <sighs> Let's say that while watching cartoons on GBA video is acceptable, this is not good at all. They also had to use a custom technology for the ROM chips because you couldn't really fit one hour and a half or even three hours of movies in a normal GBA cartridge. So they actually contracted Matrix Technologies in which Nintendo had invested back in 2002 to make some 3D special chips that could actually fit all of this. Ironically, this company was also providing ROM chips to one of the GBA video's competitors, the Juice Box. I, I love this name, I just love it. And in October 2006, it was acquired by SanDisk, which wanted to take their 3D technology and turn it into a red right one. This did not happen, and what happened was that actually SanDisk ended up using this very technology to produce right ones with many SD cards for the Japanese police. I don't know why they really needed those, but it happened. Anyway, back to GBA video. They also had to use a completely different codec because the DC Studios one wasn't enough to handle the Shrek. So what they did was contract a company named Actimagine, which already had a codec made for this specific kind of situation. And other companies were already using this codec, for example, Sony, to put their Spider-Man 2 movie into Nokia and 73s. Yes, this happened. I don't have a Shrek or Shark Tale cartridge to show you right now, but I will link in the description a article by Handrift, the developer of MGBA, where she managed to get a hold of one of these cartridges and actually dump it and document how they work in detail. But what I do have is three cartoon cartridges and we'll take a look at this. I have to give a big thank to Shevola for lending me these cartridges because without having them on hand, this video couldn't have been really realized. So after booting the cartridge, we see this not compatible with Game Boy Player logo, then the Majesco logo, and then the logo of whatever company made the cartoon we are about to watch. In our case, Nickelodeon for the Fairly Odd Parents and Cartoon Network for K and D. 
After that, the intro of this show is displayed one time, which makes sense and lets them actually cut down on how much memory they need since they only need to show the intro one time and not at the start of each episode. And what we get right after the intro is this menu that lets us choose the episodes, usually two or four. It really depends on how long a single episode is. After selecting an episode by pressing A, we get a series of instructions on how to operate the player, so pause, fast forward, all your usual player stuff. And after that we can press start and watch the episode in glorious 160p quality, which actually is pretty good for cartoons as I said before. Even on my modded IPS GBASP, the quality is pretty okay, I can't really complain. And it's perfectly adequate for the dimly lit but still usable AGS001. Just a bit choppy, but the 10 frames per second is a pretty sweet spot for cartoons. The software used for all of these cartridges is exactly the same, with some small background and graphical changes made for each cartoon series. The software is completely different on the movie cartridges though, which makes sense since they were made by a completely different company and just published by Majesco. If we open up the cartridge using a tri-wing screwdriver, we can see that they use the same memories as normal GBA games, but they don't have any memory dedicated to saving, which makes sense unless you really want to bookmark that dead frog scene in the fairly odd parents. Why? They also seem to use the exact same memory chips, except of course for the movie ones which have that custom 3D memory. And this is GBA video, would I suggest you go buy these cartridges? Well, for collecting purposes they are actually pretty nice, but if you want to watch the actual cartoons, there are definitely better ways to do so and you have to be a total idiot to actually use this thing to watch cartoons on the go. Now, if you will excuse me, I have something to do. Nice.